Okay, here we are. New painting and uh, just finished it. Came out pretty well, I think. So if you like it, give a thumbs up and stuff. I'm going to show you some of the textures, uh, how it is, and then uh, the onion, and yeah, you can see how it is. Close up. It's, it's kind of bad light in here. It's hard for me to get a good photo or video of it, but you get the idea how it's built. The Rembrandt way, as I call it. Now, this is the onion. I just balanced it on this uh, brick and uh, yeah, had fun with it. So, that's how it turned out. Uh, if you like to support my work, you can do that by going to Patreon, uh, my studio by the way, to Patreon and uh, sign up for a dollar or fifteen if you like. If you like to support me in other ways, it's very important that you give a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, tell me what you think, share it on your social media, and um, general, be nice and watch my videos because it really helps with the algorithm and revenue stuff like that. You know, if you go to Patreon and sign up for a dollar or fifteen, you can actually get your hands on on a, on a small painting like that every month in my Patreon giveaway. So, with this, I hope to see you in, in comments and hope you watch my videos and yeah, live well, eat well, have fun, keep painting and stay cool. Yeah, this is also a Patreon giveaway. And uh, it's crazy to say so, but it's a Patreon giveaway from December 2019. So next year I will do uh, three a month to catch up. And uh, yeah, that is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to pick a Patreon. Uh, and uh, he gets then a nice Christmas present. I just put my hand into the jar. And I just pick one. And who can it be? Tour Even Snare. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, then Tour Even Snare gets himself a painting for Christmas. And that is fine. I guess he was a patron for quite a while. And he also paid in more than his share. So I'm glad he got one. He has actually three tree uh, like this in that jar so he can win again later so with this I throw it back inside for next time and uh, yeah congratulations so here we are another day another onion I'm gonna paint this small onion or this bigger onion on this canvas. I was actually, I was going to the store today and I was just looking for one onion and it was basically love by first sight and uh, there was no contest. So um, I'm going to paint this onion on this canvas. Hope you enjoy and um, stick around because I will try to stick to painting this time. Yay! Okie dokie dokie. One of the most pleasurable things I can do is actually the sketching process. And uh, <coughs> hope you enjoy. See if it actually. Yeah. You can see the whole thing. <coughs> I'm just going to measure the size of the onion from top to bottom. Just like this. Whoa. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, a little bit smaller. So it's like this, and that is the thing up there. And then I need to, I think I need to have it on here and here. 
within that. The thing with uh, I, I you see I do a lot of when I do these um, still lives, uh, I do one object. Now I could of course shrink uh, the objects and do smaller from here and here, here, here. But I, want, I kind of want the onion to be the focus because there's so much. I like the single object paintings because it focuses on the shape. So you can see the shape here. And the reason I like this onion very much was the plain simplicity of it. It's not that much. It's a lot happening, but it's more. Um, Turn down. It's not. Kind of, it's not that many leaves or many things that happens in, in in it. It's quite. And I have this intense highlight here. Boom. Around here, and there's a highlight up here. And you have this shape. And yeah, uh, and then of course it stands on this. And the shadow comes down like so. It's a nice composition. I kind of like the composition here. And uh, that's what. Well, when I go to the store and I pick it up, I can see basically immediately how it will turn out. And that is also what I have been talking about in my my tutorials. The capability of looking into the future and see what. How different things will turn out. It's very important. Let me see. I'm gonna use this one first. It's good. A little bit bigger brush to get some. Just and as you see, I work on my. My canvas. I used a darker tone this time. Um, this is so nice. This is such a nice thing to do because it is basically instant gratification. Sketching is like drinking alcohol or eating pizza. You know, it's like uh, you get instant gratification. Uh, luckily, I don't get hung over from it like I do with wrong foods and. And stuff, but then when you, as you go in deeper into the detail, it becomes more and more like salmon and and uh, broccoli and vegetables. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I think it's a good way to see. It. You know, it's it's uh, sketching is fast dopamine. I think that's why many people who are painters actually becomes addicted of the quick result. They are going for the result, they want the result, and they don't appreciate the process that much. And at some point they just go empty. Because if you can't slow down and, and uh, just enjoy the ride, you will meet the wall uh, at some point, I'm pretty sure. That is what happens to a lot of people. And if you are doing it for simple vanity reasons, you are basically fucked from the start because uh, no amount of vanity can make you a better painter. Um, just needed some brushes here. Sorry about that. Really need to clean up my ship. And I that's too many brushes. I use too way too many brushes at the same time. And uh, in the end I just seem to lose control over them. So that's a waste also. Because sometimes I actually forget to to clean them. 
constantly dry out. And, uh, it's a waste of money. It's pure and simple. Let me see. Okay. As usual, I will do the sketch basically real time, and then I come here the shadows is. Just pour in some thick layers here. Yeah. So add some medium so it actually dries faster. to explain. As you can see the darkness is already there. What I'm going to do now is that I use the background to explain the shape of the onion. You know, I just paint in what's in the back. It's actually more reddish. I chose a quite reddish background also. It has some of the same tones as the onion does except from that my eyes are tricked to believing that the background are orange while it's actually when I when I squint on it it's kind of a it looks orange red but when I really look it is actually bluish because of the complementary things here with the yellows and the orange and even in in the in the more uh, violet thing but that is kind of the thing that is difficult because you you think you see reddish and orange but it's really because it's in the background and in the shadow there is kind of a vermeer vernis of blue over it so that is why I will use some glazing and stuff to kind of get it down as I paint into the blue zone. So yeah. And of course here in the shadow it's very bluish. Um, it's actually a mix between it is a mix between um, the shadow is a mix between the background color and the light color so we have to mix these two to find out um, right hue and right color actually I forgot to put on some black on my I use I didn't use to use so much black but I notice if I don't have it on my palette I get into a certain amount of problem I think I'm going to use uh, uh, both uh, ivory black in this one because it's so toned down uh, ivory black and uh, and the blue black both of them <sighs> I actually do think I had COVID uh, because it's kind of this cold doesn't really go away. I can feel I have some, probably some bronchitis or something because I'm coughing. Anyway, back to painting. Uh, as you can see, just mixing on the canvas. I've been painting onions for for thirty years. 
And I still can't seem to get it right. <laughs> so funny. There's a never ending struggle. Oh, what did you do with your life, sir? Well, I desperately tried to get an onion to look like that onion I was supposed to paint, but I never really got it right. And I painted a thousand of them without actually ever feeling that I got even close. So that was my destiny. That was my life. And yeah, I mean, it's not really Elon Musk, but I hope it has some good effect that I leave the world a tiny bit better than I when I came into it, that I added some positivity to it. You just think about Stalin and Adolf Hitler and Genghis Khan and all these mass murderers that came into the world and conquered, you know, Julius Caesar and these people power-hungry, uh, horrible people. What did they actually do for the world? You know, it's like... killed millions. What was the point of that petty life? How to do things that makes it better for people, not worse. Darken the canvas. Oh, no, I'm not gonna darken it actually. I'm gonna So, maybe, is that placement good? Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Hmm. You know, it's rough. Rough beginning. This is thing. Yes, this goes in. It's way more reddish in that on this side.
get this down a little bit. It is actually torn this deep. Uh, or is it? It should be in a more bluish tone. Just have to compare in a way how how uh, deep. Just need to get some paint into it. And this one here, it's going down like this. And you know, there's this thing here. This. this is easier than the apple, actually, I think. There is a shadow there, because this throws a shadow down. And the shadow comes down here, so this one goes up. It's funny how the brain can just pick things up and then just repeat it. There's one like this. Yeah. Something like this. I hate the fact that I need to use glasses because it's quite disturbing actually. So maybe I should get myself an operation and get my eyesight corrected. It's very dangerous as a painter, it's kind of, you know, if there should be some complications or something. It would be the end of your career. And for me, basically, the end of life in many ways. Now, there are people who go blind that actually manage to, to live good lives. <clears throat> but to lose one's vision, I can't, it's a very hard to imagine how it is to be blind. I was actually seeing this this girl on, I think it was on TikTok actually. She's blind and, and she was asked what she actually saw. And uh, she said she didn't see anything. She didn't see any black or any... Of course she, she used to see a little bit. So she had some memories of... She had some visual Used to, used to have some visual memories that could pop up in, in dreams and stuff, but after a while even they are gone. Uh, and she said something funny actually, she said, well, uh, if you cover one of your eyes, you just cover it, and you see and then you don't see anything. You don't feel you have an eye there. 
So that is what she sees. She sees absolutely nothing. She doesn't see black, she doesn't see anything. It's just not no sight. And it's hard for us to to understand how that would feel and be. It's crazy. It must, must be horrible. But I mean, people adapt to different scenarios and they learn to live with it, the new situation. But as a painter, with all my ambition, all my, I'm so vis visual of me, uh, I would be so isolated. I mean, I couldn't see a girl's butt anymore. I couldn't, I mean, the motivation would be horrible. I can't even imagine how it would be to lose one's eyesight. So, actually my grandmother got this degenerate maculation or whatever it's called. And she saw less and less and less and less. And it wasn't nice because she, she couldn't read the Bible anymore. She was very active and stuff. And, Two things actually went out the window. There was the eyesight and her her hearing. So in the end, it was almost see no evil, hear no evil. Huh, that's funny. She could actually see enough to. I uh, just had got my tattoos and she said to me, well, what is that graps you have on your hands? <laughs> she couldn't kind of see it totally, but you could see it was something, something there, something that shouldn't be there. And she wasn't a fan of that. A sweet grandmother. I had two of them actually, both of them were great. Usually we have two of them. Anyway, so it's starting to take shape. She's gonna pour in some more, some more color here. Get some tension. And I will start to correct. After that, I need to push this down because it's too bright now. Because the light areas is actually up here. I still have paintings are not the most popular on YouTube but I mean if we can do a few of these a couple of these two three I should be able to make four come on just studies like this and there's good money in them people like to have them on the wall and they're quite Quite nice for Patreon, it's very nice. So I should be able to do that. Uh -huh. Also, do different things. You can do one from photo, you can do a small figure painting. That's what I want to do. I'll do different, kind of different 
paintings. Because you don't want to get hung up in just one thing. are quite slippery so I think it's uh, the fact right now I'm mixing actually Vincent Newton and um, Old Holm and I can actually feel that the Vincent Newton is more slippery it has more oil in it so maybe I should evaluate if I actually move down like this and this one is more in this one is also lower because I can choose between taking this down or increasing this up and I already marked where I want to be so and that is one other thing you should never do you shouldn't let the object kind of grow you should try to decide one size and then stick with it so when you do mistakes you just correct the mistakes within within the, the compound of the size you chose from the beginning as I said in other videos so YouTube, I told the story of a girl in art school that started out with a natural bust, busta, you know, of her face or head, and she couldn't get it right, and it just kept growing, and in the end, she had basically made one of the statue of the Easter Islands, and this was ridiculous, you know. I just and I. And she was the type that was had, had typical narcissistic traits, and um, she wouldn't admit that she had lost control. And that was so clearly. And I just told her, you know, you're using up all all the clay in the art school. So have a, so maybe you should scale it down or remove instead of instead of adding. A while and she got so angry you know, they can't. that is a problem with artists they can't really take any criticism or people in general they're so petty and so it's like snowflakes I mean be honest how hard can it be just just accept an honest honest um, answer an honest critique the problem was that this girl actually used up basically all the clay so we didn't have much clay left because she was building this monumentous thing that never seemed to materialize okay. <coughs> You know, a little bit more sketching and uh, what uh, emptied out the battery so I just need to <coughs> charge it and uh, yeah I forgot my glasses of course it's typical so I need to fetch my glasses <coughs> Now I see clearly. Hmm. So, never thought that I was going to get a bad eyesight. It's not that bad, it's only plus one, but 
it's enough to be quite annoying. Let's see. It's going to stiff. I'm going to fill in here. I'm actually using some brown uh, sienna, mixing it out of the blue, just to turn it a bit, and uh, just see how I can get it to come alive. People actually like my. Um, my more warm object paintings. My mother is really a sucker for them. She loves them. Um, I can actually see in classical paintings that their their use of color uh, bear the stamp of um, they basically painting most of them in daylight because it has this very calm uh, uh, type of um, or harmonic uh, colors and my paintings tend to be a little bit shall we say over the top when it comes to the colors because I work in fluorescent lights and and of course that has a little bit limited specter. I can't possibly start painting during daytime anyway because I, I don't even know how they could do that because I mean the weather is changing and uh, the sunlight and the daytime and so you basically if you're going to do that you have to have a different painting for every time of the day and I will every time of kind of weather <coughs> where you have to keep changing stuff full time. Uh, that's my hypothesis anyway. See now just get some more shadow. See, I'm creating some some space here. Uh, see now. See how I work. I kind of mold thing, and then I just start to correct things and getting things into the right spots and stuff. Uh, just have to kind of build more and more um, of course I could um, go with it with that direction here more maybe and then I can see here to when you don't put in the highlight it kind of pops out more because I did the other things kind of in the other direction. Directions of uh, brushwork is extremely important in every painting. So you have to choose, I mean, like here, and kind of drag it like this.
Okay, we'll put a shadow underneath there. That shadow comes here in a way. If you find that right angle. Thick colors here to get a different uh, like this. I want to go a little bit higher here. And like this. There's a lot of stuff happening there actually. Oh. Should do something about that. After this, I'm going to paint a kunsch. It's a long time since I've been painting a kunsch now. And I um, have to find the right composition and everything. <coughs> It's nice to put on some thick layers like this because when it dries I have something to, to work with. So I don't basically have to put in more uh, thick colors. have what I need in many ways. So in a way it is a grisel or gazelle or whatever you call it. 
And you do have to have some, some skill to do that because it can easily turn to too much, or, you know, lose control over it. We need some more medium. So I tone down the chaos in the background and the things here will kind of pop out more. As <clears throat> Sometimes I go silent because I just focus and concentrate and I go into that deeper flow and I start my, my thoughts just start roaming into all kinds of stuff, you know, I think think a lot you know when I paint and there's one of the things that are so so great because the painting is basically like dance and nothing is better than thinking while you are doing motion it's like walking you think very well when you are walking and it's the same thing with this basically I, I tend to think very well when I'm painting because it stimulates activity in my brain. It's actually good science to to back up this claim. So in the end we get many benefits from it. In a way I could almost call it soon because 
I noticed that it's very hard for me to put in more paint without it now kind of just greases up and uh, eventually gets ruined and there's no point in ruining it. It's actually going to be more, uh, it's not going to have this kind of, that much texture. So, you know, brightest areas, no, it's kind of getting into the point where it's very hard for me to put in more color now. And it's basically an okay sketch. It's um, the things are basically at the right places. And uh, that is the whole point. As you can see, I'm not creating some perfect rendition in the first sketch. It's just not what I'm doing. I'm not after getting a result in the first uh, go that is going to resemble a finished painting. It's not my goal, I just, my goal is to build uh, the, the basics for the next level. That is the goal with the first sketch. And, uh, so as I said many times before, in a way, the goal is the same as when the classics make these gazelles or these these kind of greyish uh, toned sketches. Just that I like to <coughs> use color when I do it. I guess that's the difference. That uh, well, became very boring here now, but you know, because there is something in me that would like you to kind of feel have a finished feel to it. But literally, is not the point at this point here. So. Yeah. I basically think this will do for now. This should be this should be thicker actually. All the way out here. Then it goes like in underneath.
Yeah, I think it's good should do. Just leave it at this for now. <coughs> Shadows gonna be a little bit lower. Approximately like this. Oh. It took about one hour. It's not so bad. Yeah. Okay, see ya. Okay, here we are, layer number two. So, I'm gonna put on some retouche vanis. It is this one, retouche vanis from Old Holm. Uh, I'm gonna put this on to, because it's very, what, what happened now? Nothing, no, okay. Uh, then I can see the colors, and then I'm going to glaze, and then I'm going to paint. So that's what I'm going to do. So. As you can see, the colors are just now popping out and I get more of the depth and everything so it's easier for me to see uh, where I'm going to start. Of course I always start on the light areas, uh, but let's see what happens. So this has to dry now for about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, so it gets a little bit sticky and then I do a glaze and then I scrape it down and start painting as you've seen me before do before if you are uh, watching my videos. Okay. Okie dokie dokie. See what happens. Get a little glaze in here. And uh, then start painting. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like this. It's just Traplac or Alserin and uh, French Ultramarine. That is the preferred blue in my world. So, so this is just kind of, it's not thick, it's not, not something uh, profound, but it's just to get some 
textures into it and get some life into the surface. Um, let me take this. You see me do the same. down. Taking away some oil, actually. So good to take away some oil so it's not becoming too oily. Now this will slowly kind of be dragged into the retouche furnace. So, um, yeah. And then I kind of add a little bit of color and medium while I do that. So that's a good thing. Let's see, my glasses are here. Then I just start painting. And as usual, I just start with a with a point of light. I always try to find this rational place to start, and uh, just do like this about there. Now there's a lot of texture underneath here, now, all the brushwork, and maybe you can can focus a little bit closer. So you can actually see what I'm doing. I can maybe you can see better. Uh, I'm gonna work with the onion for a while, so it's nice for you to be a little bit closer. Again, you also see how the colors are probably getting mixed together on the surface because of the glaze. So there. Now you can see it's a little bit fluid in a way, and the colors you know, starts immediately to kind of collide together, almost like a, uh, almost like a, if it was um, um, watercolor. I remember I was in New York and saw these beautiful portraits of uh, of Gamia. And this, this, this thing here, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's almost like they just, the colors just glide into one another. And I think he has done something similar to this. He has been glazing and then he has been adding some color and the colors just kind of melts into one another um, to get the very transparent um, feel to it. I really love that. So, and I think it's just a coincidence that I saw this happening when I was painting myself uh, and I saw it uh, in his paintings and I thought, hmm, maybe that is what he did. To get all these beautiful, uh, what do you call it? Oh, Vagang. It's kind of trans translation from this to this, you know. You know the Ivagang, Ovagang. In Norway, we call it Ovagang. Or the blurring the lines between the different levels in the painting. So if you can get this aquarelle type of or watercolor type of feel to it, they will just glide together. The lines will just kind of slowly start to evaporate and things just uh, become like watercolor as I say. And I think that is a very nice, um, nice way to paint, to glaze. Uh, then I, of course, build more and more, but I think it's a very nice way to start every, every layer of paint. See how much I just get out of that shape immediately. Just gonna you know, pops out. Of 
Just a crispy peel. Must have some more texture to so that I differentiate it from the rest. In both in direction and stuff. Now I get so how I did that I just kind of uh, let it kind of let it, let it looser by holding the brush looser so it you know adds the, a thicker brush stroke there. Actually, this one is very white. This and like that, Zimzalabim, Zimzalabum. Here too, just let it glide, so you can create this very nice watercolory thing. And then I kind of increase a little bit more texture there, so you get that depth. Now the, dark, the because of this very bright is actually uh, it is very orange, so the background here is more in. It's the same background as the apple I just painted, but the point is that is because of the color in the onion, um, the background seem uh, more bluish and deeper. So, yeah. So we can bring this up. Mm -hmm. Burr and burr, day for day. a little bit wrong. Tone it down a little bit.
this. Uh, mix it a little bit. So this. Now I needed highlights to explain the shape. Because there is very little texture in the main part of the onion here. It's very slippery and that is one of the reasons why I chose it because it was a little bit different than all the other onions. Sometimes it's nice to be silent, just focus, see here too, I just, it just glides because of the oil I had on, and the glaze, so I just slide together. I wanna a little bit off. Let's see. It's a very nice shadow here. Like this. It follows the shape all around. It comes kind of up here. Inside there is kind of red. Mm -hmm. Like that. More yellowish. One too, you know, underneath here. Have to be so loose on the because it's so thin. I don't want it to get ruined. And it's kind of transparent, so you can actually just use some red underneath there. And it will kind of feel like a shadow anyway.
you know it's it, it is so beautiful because it, it focuses the mind that is that is that, it's just the focus focusing of the mind is just a, so pleasurable because all other thoughts you must have all other agony or whatever you are doing or if you are struggling with something I mean painting can help so much in in basically giving life some some spark especially if you have some trouble in your life or whatever and you can actually switch off of course it's very hard to switch off when you have some troubles and maybe even harder to get into the flow but what I noticed myself the having had some struggles and stuff and getting out of these struggles and just feeling that the power is coming back on uh, I noticed that my stamina for stress is now actually heightened I have because of stuff that has happened in my life I was very stressed for a couple of years and and there might come some more also, but I just noticed how strong it has made me now, or stronger anyway, how I'm waking up and, and as um, Freud actually did say, there will come a time in your life when you look back on your struggles and your and if it's heartbreak or whatever with uh, with love you will actually see it in hindsight as something extremely beautiful and um, but then of course you have to be able to to learn from it and, and grow you can't keep doing the same mistakes over and over and over and hope for a better result that is that is you know the definition of madness but if you can learn from falling it's just amazing how you can translate that into action in general in, in life it's really great This can't be orange because this is orange, so it has to be a kind of a deeper bluish reddish tone or something like that. I will figure this out <coughs> as I go along. And of course the shadow here is in the dark blue-ish. See now how the colors just collide together because of my glaze. And smooth. A little bit sticky, but not too much.
It's quite dark. Push it down, put in some more blue and red, especially down here. So find this right here. Like this, and then I drag it this way. Like that, so we get some textures and stuff in the background. It's a little bit lighter up there, which means I need to push it more down here. The background and onion is a little bit the same color, but as I say, it's a little bit different in in hue and it has some blue in it in the background which of course is natural because the violet or the bluish is, is the complementary color and the, the shadow color for the light. Uh, the blue or the, the background color is kind of a mix between the, between the, the complementary colors or the bright areas and and um, uh, the color there. So you mix those two together and you get a shadow color. Of course it's orange and yellow so it has to be against the blue specter, blue, violet, but also a little bit dirtied up. So not dirty but you know broken. And then things start to come alive at some point. So, well, maybe that explains a little bit. Now I'll just keep on banging on and see how far I get. Okay, there we are. <clears throat> Been painting for a while. Going to do some uh, things with uh, the surroundings and stuff, and um, um, let it dry as usual. <clears throat> Maybe I should actually do a little bit like this. <coughs> Just to do that shape. Like this. There's one coming down here. And it goes through this. A shadow underneath there, which is quite nice. And of course, it is in the blue. And uh, yeah, you can also use the back of your, of course. I mean, Turnal it did actually use his nails and everything. And there are stories about how dirty his hands were. Just probably like this, went to the bar looking like this. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, when I've been painting for many many hours my hand is just drowning in in paint and dirt and shit you know I can't, all, sometimes it's so bad I can't have a problem getting it off I need to use kind of natural soap and <clears throat> shit to get it off kind of a 
grun soap, green soap as it's called in Norway. I also use uh, <clears throat> that to clean my brushes actually. I don't use uh, much terp to clean the brushes. Uh, I almost don't use any turpentine at all except from when in the cup here like 70% and 30% linseed oil. So, but I don't use much uh, of it actually. <clears throat> and I guess that's maybe a good thing. I don't know if it's how healthy or unhealthy turpentine is. But I mean, uh, even if it were dangerous, I think I wouldn't care because my painting. Of course, I think health, health is extremely important. I mean, you don't have a body, you are a body. But when it comes to my painting, I kind of have to make a choice there. Because I couldn't paint without the medium, not, not in this way anyway. And, um, actually, a friend of mine is making oils, which from from the ground and um, if you use his oils you don't probably don't need turp because they dry quite fast fast because of the process he is letting go go through <coughs> but um, it's very expensive so and it takes a long time for him to make the oils so I actually understand very well why they have to be a little bit expensive. But I use so much of it, so much oil, or I use so much medium. I just said now that I didn't use much medium, but I'm using medium in a way that would make using his oils almost uh, a tragedy because the, the kind of quality he makes by hand, by actually pressure, uh, pressure uh, linseed seeds and everything from the ground up, it would be a travesty to use his oils in the way I use my medium. That carelessness and just, uh, if you're going to use his oils, you have to be, I think, more focused and, and uh, work with very small things like more like Vermeer type of stuff <clears throat> type of paintings I mean so yeah okay <clears throat> well that is my opinion about that This is important because there are lights coming from down here and up. So I need to get that in. But I have to be very subtle. So there I can actually use my finger to push it down. One. You see the line here is too strong, so I have to let make that the kind of glide in more glide into the background without actually losing the intensity of it. So that's quite difficult. Uh-huh. OK. 
Okay, like this, this. Same thing that is uh, on in the apple, and um, it's the same background actually, but it's always a little bit different because the main light is now on this, so you get kind of a different kind of hue uh, in the background because of a different object. So yeah. There's kind of a, you know, uh, there has been a, a branch to get these markings in the wood. So I just tone it down a little bit, but just wanted it to, to be there. Okay, let me see. <clears throat> I'm going to tone it down a little bit up here so I get some more darkness and then, of course, a little bit more light. a little bit more light just behind here and bring that off a little bit <clears throat> so Okay, voila. I think I will leave it at that for now because I, I noticed that uh, it's hard for me to push more color into it without it becoming kind of messy and it takes very little to mess it up when you come to that point. So I think I will just pull it that are dry, or at least surface dry. So it's actually a, a good thing that it is a little bit sticky. Uh, it's not totally dry next time I paint on it. Whoop, shit. <coughs> uh, because, yeah. 
Anyway, let's see, zoom a little bit. See all the brushwork. So, okay. Okay, another day, another onion. I'm just gonna do the last touch up on this. Uh, hopefully, that will go well. Never know. Just need to enhance some of the things, the lights and the shapes and stuff. Be a little bit careful with this Ratush varnish today because it's a little bit, you know, it's the one from Old Holland. Uh, and uh, be a little bit careful because it can easily dissolve. There are places that are still <laughs> wet, so yeah. Usually it had a dry, kind of have dried, or kind of all over, but it's that little thing there that is the problem. So I will to give it more shape here, add in some more small details, and uh, then I will be done, I guess. So just wanted to I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit, and then I will. Okay, okay, okay. So here we are. Uh, nice. Okay. <coughs> so then we start somewhere over the ocean, over the rainbow. Let me see. Just going to try to round it a little bit more, give it some um, more oomph, whatever that means. You see here. Give it a little bit more blue on this side in the glaze. That's a good thing. That's a good contrast to all the orange <coughs> in it. Now there's enough textures here, so I don't need to build more texture. I just need to kind of round it a little bit and get it into give it a little bit more uh, kind of <coughs> lift it a little bit so that's all it's not much let's call it a touch up maybe even even Steven <coughs> so work a little bit in direction here See, I need to. Maybe I should have <coughs> made a new palette before I started. It might be, have been a good idea. But. It's not much to say actually, it's just to uh, 
make it a little rounder, give it a little bit more sculptural shape. What is that sound? So annoying. I should try to follow shape here a little bit. Okay, it's kind of nice, give it a <coughs> round and nice feeling to it, I think. Uh -huh. Covid actually, so I'm kind of hanging in there a little bit still. Mm-hmm. 
and um, Yeah, I'm thinking out loud, I guess. There's not much to say, unless I kind of just trying to uh, focus this. And uh, not screw it up, which is very easy to do in many ways. It's a very neutral onion, you know, it's not much happening in it. Usually it's more that happens in an onion, in the peel and stuff. But I chose this because I it was exactly the reason why I chose it because it didn't happen so much in it. And it was kind of a different challenge. It is <coughs> clear. It has to dissolve it. It's kind of seeing double now because I've been basically been painting for over twenty hours. 
so I guess I am starting to reach my limits and I'm still not finished so it's kind of a rough and tumble thing right now Okay, empty for, for um, the card was empty, not empty, full, <laughs> not empty, no, full, the card was full, and it's just stopped, bastard, anyway. This is a little bit boring, this, on you. Maybe I should have actually chosen another one, different one. Because this is kind of, uh, kind of boring, as I say. It's so hard to get it to, to kind of do what my paintings usually do. Uh, live their own life, but I will do my best to make it come alive. So, let's see what happens. This one comes very close. And this hard, um, it's kind of too hard, as you know what I mean. I'm not talking about my penis, I'm talking about my painting. Because right now my penis is not hard at all. Because I'm very focused on this.
something more to happen in this thing. Come alive. It's alive. Like that. Yeah, that's better. Now something is happening in it. Oh. Yeah. Now my arm is starting to hurt too. That's a good sign. You know why? I was dumb enough to have some food. Because I hadn't been eating for 24 hours or something like that. I shouldn't have done that. Because when I eat, my arm hurts. Could it be that I actually <coughs> have a tight vein? That I'm about to get a heart attack or something? I wonder why. Maybe. That would be a bummer. It's not that I'm home. I'm not skinny, I have fat on my body, despite trying to do everything right. It's kind of embarrassing really, because I should have been kind of looking like Brad Pitt by now. So if I have a tight vein in my artery, well that can actually be. Maybe I need to check that out. It would be embarrassing to die of a heart attack. that I would care because I would be dead.
يلا يلا Can actually be so much stress that I have had. Huh. But then again, I'm exercising, cycling. I do actually eat healthy. But I clearly eat too much fat or have been too stressed. So I guess stress is very dangerous. It can actually kill you. And I had my share, no doubt about that.
Okay. What do you think? It's just nice. It's just good enough. This is number six, painting number six today. And it's a miracle that I actually, it's not really a miracle. It is basically putting yourself on, what shall I say, put myself on a zero, I just put myself on onto zero, zero, yeah, and then I just work. I don't think, I don't um, ponder how far I will get or anything like that. I just work, I just start chewing. I call it chewing. You just go, go, go. As far as you can. Do all you can. That's what I'm doing right now. I have two more paintings, big ones, that I should do today before I took my flight. And I won't make it. But I'm going to bring them with me anyway, as planned. Bring with me the photos and finish them in my barn studio in Hogerson. Oh no, sorry, Carme. Carme! And maybe have them in the exhibition unfinished. And then just finish them when I'm there. There's not much time I need. And that's the annoying thing. It's just one more day and I would have done it. So it's kind of frustrating to put it mildly. That is how it is. I didn't plan good enough this time. I thought I was in control. But I started way too late and I also lost some time in a couple of things I did. Like Tinder. So stupid. Okay, I'll just push 
this down a little bit more. And we will call this one done, finished, over. is nice it's a nice hue to it see Good. Is this good? Say so, yeah. Say so, yeah, Yes, I am concentrating about my painting right now, like crazy. It's called a deep flow. And I kind of just disappear.
so this was nice and loud. Give it some yellow. Sans. Just gonna give it a little bit red on that side here and think it's okay. <sighs> My stomach blows up when I'm eating. should actually check my arm. Is it my arm or is it a grueling heart attack because of all of the stress I've had? Hmm, I need to check that. Can be I have a tightened vein. So when I eat, my blood thickens a little. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 dead. That would be boring. I don't have too much to do. I haven't lived yet, I feel, kind of. Too much to do. No time to die. No, seriously, I don't have time to die. Too many loose ends.
mean that sincerely it's too many too many loose ends I need to tighten it all up before I go Künstlern Knütern Rüvix olan Passed away From a heart attack He exercised for 40 years Killed his hips and his veins And he died prematurely Years before his time that would be so bloody pathetic. It's hard to even fathom how stupid that would be. Me and Luna. Huh. Okay, sorry for my silence, but it's very important for me to get this done and I can't do both. That is what deep concentration is. Just, it's totally in the moment. So, I think this is it, honestly, I could have said that a few times by now, but I actually mean it this time.
So sorry about that. Same same thing again. Just gonna do a little. I think this has also become quite nice now. So I'm just gonna you know do a little boom boom. So and then I'm gonna I'm going to uh, sign it and call it. Yeah, call it out. Okay, then I sign, sign of the time, and I bring the rest with me to my home, Iceland, Kame, and finishing it there. Sounds like a better deal, to be honest, because I can't possibly do it here. So, Ki. Four, two, okay. Dot two, one. Yeah, that's that. Yay! Right.
Gerät didn't see that before now actually. There was actually a kind of this thing underneath there which actually gave it a little extra. That's how it is. You know? That was the pricking over in as called in Norway. The thing that made it whole. That's nice. So, perfect. Nice. Lovely. Yeah. Hmm. I've done a good job. There's no doubt about it. Okay, see ya. Okay. Here you are at the end of the video. So now you can see how it turned out. It's pretty nice. Uh, got the shapes a little bit into place and I feel that it turned out pretty okay. You can see all the textures and stuff I have been doing. Now, yeah, hope you can give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and check out my Patreon if you want to support my work. Uh, giving thumbs up is extremely important for the algorithm so please do that for me I would really appreciate it tell me what you think and uh, yeah hope to see you in the next video so with this have a good one and stay cool